Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I hope this finds everybody doing well this afternoon on this Wednesday evening. I had told you on Sunday that I would be back to you today with some instruction and to talk a little bit about our Sunday service this week. As you know, we tentatively had set May 17th as our return date, and at this time, I see no reason not to come back together, but yet, as we come together, it's going to look a little bit different, so I just wanted to share some things with all of you and hope that everyone will be on the same page, will take this to heart, and will do your best. Um, the guideline for in-person worship service is to maintain the six-foot social distancing order. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to um, mark off some pews. And as it stands right now, we can seat about 90 to 95 in the sanctuary um, by marking off the pews and the six-foot distance between us. And so I look forward to being together on Sunday, um, but also know that it's going to be different. So I just wanted to share some things with you as we um, get ready to be together for the first time. I know there are many churches that are still waiting and um, not ready to be together. There are other churches that started last week. And so we each make that decision. And as a board, um, we have made this decision to use the 17th as our begin date. But I wanted to say before we um, start talking about those things, if you're not ready to come back to worship, and I have said this all along, if you are uncomfortable being in a crowd and you choose to stay home, by all means, I respect that, I honor that, and there is no right or wrong choice. You choose to do whatever is best for you and your spouse, you and your family. And so if you're not with us this Sunday in worship, we will record and play the service, but it will be done um, after the worship time because I have been struggling with um, some technical difficulties trying to figure out how we wanted to go live, and so I think for this Sunday, um, it's best that we'll just record it and then play it at a later time. And I apologize if that's an inconvenience for you, but um, that's just what works best as I try to work out the plan and get everybody on board as to what we have to do this Sunday. So just some things I want you to be aware of as you come to Worship Sunday. I'm asking everyone to use the main entrance upstairs where we drive into the portico, I'm asking you to use that entrance only. We're going to lock the downstairs off. We're going to ask you not to come in the downstairs because every place that we come into, we have to treat it as being a place that has been infected, for the lack of a better term. And then it takes more man hours to disinfect and clean the whole church again. And so... What we're going to try to do is to limit the contact area. And so we're going to ask that everybody use the upstairs entrance. We're going to come together and we're going to watch as we come in and, and maintain those six-foot distancings. We're going to use ushers to seat. So this means that because of the fact that we are marking off six-foot distancing, you most likely will not, and I started to name you, but I won't, but you most likely will not get to sit in the place that you normally sit. So I want you to be aware of that today. I want you to have a few days to think about that because that is just the um, way it's going to have to be with the, with the distancing. So as we come together, we will not have a nursery available this week. We will not have a children's moment. We will not have coffee. We will not have donuts. The... Um, Entryway, the chairs will be spaced out in the six-foot distancing. So I ask that you not move any chairs. Wherever they're spaced, I, I would hope that you would leave them there because we're trying to keep everyone safe as we move forward. I know how this congregation is, and I'm the worst, but I'm going to ask everybody to refrain from hugging and handshaking. You know, you may be ready and willing to hug everybody that comes along. But someone else may not be ready to be the recipient of your hug. And there are many of us that can tell someone, stay away from me. I don't want you hugging me. But yet there are those who are challenged to do that. And so we don't want anybody forcing a hug, a handshake, or whatever upon another person. So we're asking again to maintain 
the six foot distancing um, as we go through this Sunday. There are hand sanitizers stations located throughout the entryway. There's a new hand sanitizer hanging between the bathrooms um, just off the entry. And so those are available. If you are comfortable wearing a mask and you feel like you need to wear a mask, please, we're asking that you wear one. Um, they will not be provided. I do not have them here, but if you have your own mask and that is what makes you comfortable, please feel free to wear it. We're going to have, as I said, the pews will marked off. <clears throat> At the end of the service, we're going to dismiss and we're going to ask that everyone just leave the building and, and maintain the spacing as you go about um, your business in the parking lot. If you need to be picked up at the front doors as some are on Sundays, that's fine. There will be places to sit there in the entryway, but again, the six foot spacing on the chairs. So just a lot of challenges as we look at um, coming together, be it trying to maintain the guidelines that have been asked of us by the governor's office and to do what we can as a congregation to err on the side of caution and keep everyone safe. We will share communion. It will be uh, most likely a cup with a wafer in it with a cup of juice stacked on top of it. We will have the diaconates gloved and masked and ask them to hand you that communion. If you choose not to share in communion, that's okay. But at the same time, we will take those and hold them until everybody's been served and then we will share communion at one time. And so just some things that are going to look different. And I know for many of you, this is a big inconvenience and and you probably don't like it. And I understand that and I respect that too. But this is how we need to do it. And this is how we're going to um, try to approach it this Sunday. So I hope you'll do your part to come and be with us, but yet to acknowledge what we have to do for um, caution, for the safety of all, and that we will get through this. And each week we will learn how and what's best for us as we move forward and be able to add back um, those bits and pieces. I've asked the Sunday school classes, the Bible study classes, not to meet this week because of um, the need to find space to social distance. And so just to allow us a little bit of time to see how this flows, to get comfortable with um, what this means for us as far as coming in and out of the building and cleaning things up as we go and um, looking forward to being back together. And, you know, the bottom line is if this is the biggest inconvenience that we face in our lives, which I know many of you have been through uh, much worse, the older generations have gone through so much more. And for us to think that staying at home or having to follow some of these guidelines is some kind of a big inconvenience for us, then that speaks volumes about who we really are. Um, I think it's time that we all um, pay attention to how blessed we are, how much we have, and um, realize that this is no inconvenience. We are still a blessed people, and I look forward to seeing all of you. I hope you're doing well, and um, that you make the decision that gives you peace. I love you. I will see you Sunday for those that come. For those that choose not to, you are in my thoughts and prayers. And we will have the video um, out Sunday afternoon for everyone. And we will continue to be the church in whatever manner we come together and choose um, to be together. So take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon.